a blood test you've had done has shown you've got something called pre-diabetes, which is also called borderline diabetes. But you're not alone. Over 7 million people in the UK have pre-diabetes. So what is pre-diabetes? It's when the levels of sugar in your blood are high, but not yet high enough to be classed as type 2 diabetes. Many people have pre-diabetes and are completely unaware of it. And that's because there's often no warning signs and it can develop slowly and you don't have any symptoms from it. So let's focus on the good news bit. You don't have type 2 diabetes. Not yet and you can do things about it to reduce that risk of ever developing type 2 diabetes. So this is a bit of a crossroads where you can make some decisions about your own health and life. You can either carry on as you are, and you may well develop type 2 diabetes and the complications that come with it, or you could decide to make some lifestyle changes that we're gonna talk about. And if you do, you might reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes, as well as improve the quality of your life. So often I like to think of this as actually, in a way, it's good news because you haven't yet got type 2 diabetes and maybe this is just a little bit of a shock to let you know there are things you could do with changing in your life. So what are the dangers if you do go on to develop type 2 diabetes? I think most people would be surprised to find out that in the UK, 22,000 people die early every year because of type 2 diabetes. It's one of the leading causes of preventable sight loss, heart attack, stroke and kidney failure. So what next? What can you do about it? Well, you are in control of the future and you do have the support of the healthcare team. We know that type 2 diabetes is closely linked with obesity. It's thought one of the reasons for this might be that the fat cells get into the liver and the pancreas stopping it working properly and that leads to high blood sugar. We also know that fad diets uh, can be an easy way, relatively easy, to shift some weight quickly, but that keeping weight off is really, really hard. The good news is, is that according to the NHS, just a 5% reduction in body weight, followed up by regular uh, moderate intensity exercise, can reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 50%. And we also know that making these lifestyle changes is much more successful at reducing this risk than just taking medications alone. Number one, don't actually focus on the weight loss. Now that sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? But I'm sure you've all tried diets before and you end up just obsessing about food, don't you? So actually, if you focus on making small lifestyle changes that are overall making you healthier, you'll end up losing weight anyway without obsessing about food. So don't obsess about weight loss. Number two, people try all sorts of different eating methods. Some people like to do intermittent fasting. Some people try keto. Some people do like to calorie count. Some people go low carb. There isn't one right way to do it. Essentially, you just need to burn more calories than you're consuming. And all of those different diets manage that. So what you've got to think about is what works for me? Which one am I going to stick to forever? Because that's what it is, it's about making a change that's forever. Not about, I'll do six weeks of keto and then I'll go back to normal. There's no bikini diet because that's not what this is about. This is about making lifestyle changes forever to be healthy. So think about what is most likely gonna work for you and your life. Okay, so what should you actually be eating? I think it's a good idea to focus on what you can be adding into your diet rather than obsessing and focusing on what you should be avoiding or certain unhealthy foods. So the things that you can be adding more of into your diet are like fruit and veg. So if you're having a sandwich, ram pack it full of salad and eat lots of fresh fruit and veg, but also think about things like lentils and beans and peas. Um, and I would recommend that for every main meal, you have about half of that meal is made up of fruit and veg or lentils and beans. And this way you're gonna increase the amount of fiber in your diet, you're gonna fill yourself up for longer really good for your gut bacteria, if you've heard about that. And um, it probably means you'll fill up on that stuff and you'll eat less of the other slightly unhealthier foods that might raise your blood sugar. And it doesn't have to cost a fortune. So you can have canned food, have frozen food. So if you're having a curry, chuck in a can of chickpeas, that'll bulk it up for you. If you're making a stew, you can buy a pack of frozen casserole veg and you could just chuck that in. I buy loads of frozen veg actually. This is a special mix, you can get stir fried stuff. It's also easier and it's cheaper. It's not gonna rot at the back of your fridge. 
So have a look in the frozen section next time you're in the supermarket. You might be surprised how much there is there. And the other thing to mention, hopefully a fairly easy switch, is to change to whole wheat versions of all the stuff you're already eating. So you can get obviously pasta, bread, noodles, rice, nice little handy packet. Just try and switch. If you can make the move over to whole grain, again, it's another way to increase your fiber, keeps you fuller for longer, and generally healthier switch to make. So it's an easy one to do. And I would also say, whilst you're eating, try and enjoy the food. Like food is fun, isn't it? We all, we all love food, really. And we want to have a good relationship with it. So try not to eat whilst you're watching telly or scrolling through your phone or at your desk if you can. Try and enjoy the food, take a moment, think about what you're eating and appreciate it. Don't try and rush it all at once. And in that way, you, we find that people have a better, healthy relationship with food if you can do that. We know that being sedentary or sitting for really long periods of time is really bad for our health. In fact, it's just as dangerous as smoking. So we need to get moving. Ideally, we need to be doing 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week, which sounds like a lot. So we can always try and make that our goal and reach for it. And it can be done through little small bursts of exercise known as exercise snacking. So you might set yourself the goal that every hour you won't sit for longer than an hour and you'll get up and walk to your kitchen, do a couple of squats and come back. You've got to just set these little exercise snacking goals. But the key thing is you're not sitting for long periods of time. So how can you make these sustainable changes? You might want to watch this bit again or write some notes on it whilst you're watching it. So what I'd say first of all is write down some goals. Narrow them down by thinking about what would it mean to you to be healthier. Maybe you'd have more energy to run around with the grandkids. Maybe the pain in your joints would ease. Have a think about what would it mean to you in one year's time to be healthier? What would be different? Second of all, think about what you might already be doing to help this. Think about things you've tried in the past uh, that may have failed and, and think about why they failed. Think about what strengths and qualities do you have that can make these changes happen and who around you can help support you. Right, this point is really, really important. What I want you to start thinking about is committing to a goal that's a really small change, something you think you can stick to. So I'm not suggesting you're going to start running three times a week and go to a Zumba class and only ever eat vegetables. Something realistic that you think you can do and start really, really small. So that might be you say every lunchtime I'm going to go outside and walk for two minutes and then come in. You might say I'm not going to sit down for more than one hour throughout the day. Maybe make a little tick sheet, tick it off when you've done it. So set realistic goals that you can achieve. That's a really important key thing to do. And when you've done that goal, then you can move on and extend and build on it. Maybe just do one goal at a time and then be proud when you've done it. And think about what might happen, why reasons you might fail and how you might try and get around that. So you might think, well, it's raining. What am I going to do when it's raining? Make a plan. So make a plan to try and prevent failure of these goals and try and focus on the success of little tiny small goals. Making these lifestyle changes can make a massive difference to your life. Not only in reducing your risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, but also improving the quality of your life. You might find you've got more energy. You might find you're sleeping better. You might find your joint state don't ache as much. So it's really worth putting a lot of effort into trying to achieve these goals we've talked about. It's not always going to be easy. It will be hard at times, but if you've got the motivation and some good support, and you will have the support of the healthcare team, then I know, and I think you know, that you can do it. So start today and let's make sure you kick diabetes to the curb.